In today's video, I'm going to be going over the 10 biggest things that helped me progress as a painter in the hopes that it's going to help you guys do the same. So number one, let's get the biggest out of the way first. The first and most important thing in my opinion is brushes. I used to use really, really cheap brushes. I used to use Games Workshop brushes. And the reality is, is once you invest in decent brushes, this is a huge level up. And it's the one thing that I would say that is worth investing money in. For any of you guys who do know me know that I do not agree with spending money on 90% of the rubbish that you are sold online for this hobby. You do not need half of the stuff that is out there on the market. But brushes will have a massive impact on your work. And if you truly want to be a great painter, you need to find the brushes that are right for you. Now, the thing to understand about brushes is brushes is an incredibly personal choice. I have some incredible painters as friends. I'm lucky to be in that situation, right? It's a very personal choice to find the brushes that work for you for the way that you are painting. So when someone tells you a brush is the best brush, you should not believe them. You should be trying different brush bands and finding the ones that work for you. There are no best brushes. This is really, really important to understand. Now I know I'm going to get people asking, so I'm going to tell you what my three favorite brands are and the one that I specifically use. First of all, I still love Winsor & Newton Series 7. They're incredible brushes. The reality is, is they're incredibly overpriced. They're so expensive, it's, it's, it's unreal. And their quality has been very inconsistent recently, so I've moved away from them for that reason. But if you can get good ones, in my opinion, in my experience, there aren't any better. The next brushes that I like, and this is a controversial one, I do really like Artis Opus brushes. I think their behavior is excellent. They have a lovely point to them, which is incredibly important with miniature painting. But again, for anyone who knows me knows that I do not look after my brushes. I'm not very careful with them. And the reality is, is Artis Opus do not last long enough. They're not durable enough, in my opinion. I enjoy Artis Opus. I will use them if I can't get my regular brand. They are excellent brushes in my opinion, but I destroy them far too quickly. I have had a Artis Opus brush last for me maybe 20 minutes, right? But that's a reflection on me, not necessarily the brushes. So just something to think about. So what brushes do I use then? Well, Rosemary & Co Series 33 and Series 8, in my opinion, are the best option for me. They're very durable, so I don't destroy them too quickly. And that's a massive factor for me. And they have really, really good points on them and they hold paint really well. They're not as good as Winsor & Newton, in my opinion, when you get a perfect Winsor & Newton, but they are still excellent for what they are. And for someone who destroys their brushes really, really quick, they're cheap. And that is a huge factor for me, but I can't stress this enough test brushes yourself and find what works for you. This is really important. Stop listening to people on the internet who are telling you this brush is the right one or this brush is the best one because you have to find that out for yourself. Number two is gonna be a good lamp. I know I said at the beginning, I don't agree with this idea that you should be spending loads of money and buying all of the rubbish that they try and sell you online. But a desk lamp is, a decent desk lamp is so critical to you becoming a better painter because seriously guys how can you paint something really well if you can't see it really well i mean look at the difference between this picture one of them is under my desk lamp one of them is under a cheap lamp which sits beside my bed that i read with and what we see online all the time is we're sold these massive 200 300 pound led lamps so this is what we need to be incredible miniature painters those lamps are great, right? But the reality is, is you don't need something that extreme to get started. And not, not everyone wants to invest that much money into their hobby. So my recommendation to start out is just buy yourself a nice desk lamp, a half, something half decent, and put a daylight bulb in it. So it will give you a true reflection of what you're looking at. And then if you want to upgrade to something more expensive, something better quality, more importantly, then by all means go for it. But what you need to remember is not everyone is a competition painter who's looking to compete or looking to go viral online because they've painted or taken a photograph of this amazing miniature. So you can do it on a budget, just like a half decent lamp with a daylight bulb will be enough. And I know I'm going to get asked, so I'm going to tell you the lamp that I'm using is a daylight company Lumi. 
right? And I'll put a link in the comments below, in the description below, assuming I remember. It's about 125 pound and that is a really really good lamp and it's a reasonable price considering what what you can pay for a lamp but as i said you don't need that just think about it guys how can you paint if you don't have enough light my third point is a controversial one some things that make your painting easier is not making you your better painter if you want to improve you need to actually allow yourself to do it i'll use a wet palette as an example yeah i said it and I know loads of people are gonna string me up online. Yes, I said it, a wet palette is not going to benefit your progression. It's going to slow your progression down. It might make your painting easier now, but it's gonna slow your progression down in the long run. Now the question is, is, should I give you some time in the comments to rage at me and start a witch hunt? Probably, it will be fun to see, but I'm not going to. So let me explain and hear me out with this. This was originally brought to my attention by a friend of mine called Tommy Saul, who is a incredible, incredible painter. But I didn't agree with him at first either. I was very much, I used the wet palette, it made my life so much easier, and I was painting better because of it. But what I tended to find as I progressed, and especially as I started teaching, is it was drastically slowing my progression down in other areas. And the reason for that is, is one of the main things, one of the most important things as miniature painters is we need to have an intimate understanding of our paint consistency and how to manage that consistency while we're painting. And the truth of it is, is one of the things that a wet palette does, as we all know, is it keeps your paint wet. The problem with that is, is it gives you less opportunities to manage that paint yourself. It gives you less opportunities for you to have to adjust the consistency of your paint because it's not drying as quickly. So what this effectively means is it's slowing down your progression because it's giving you less opportunity to learn about paint consistency. And in the long run, this is actually going to hinder you rather than help. It's going to slow down that understanding. And although it might make things easier now, which is great, we all want to see results now. What you're going to find is it potentially has quite a large impact further down the line and in other areas. Now, I'm not saying everyone should stop using a wet palette, but what I would say to you is ask yourself, do you truly understand paint consistency? Do you know the paint consistency you need for every single job? And can you manage your paint consistency easily? Because if the answer is no, then removing that wet palette for a while is potentially going to increase your progression at a much faster rate. So as an example, when I realized this, I stopped using a wet palette for a year and just used a tile. Honestly, it was a hard year of painting, but after that period of time, I came back to a wet palette and my painting was so much stronger and I was so much more confident because I understood more about my paint. So my point here is, I'm not trying to get you to stop using a wet palette. It's just a very good example but my point here is to be careful of tools that you are sold that make your life easier. Because what they're potentially doing is they're removing elements of learning that can really cause you more challenges further down the line. A little bit more struggle now may give you a lot more confidence later on. Mistakes. <laughs> Next one's gonna be mistakes. Now this might sound like a bit of a weird one, but it was a really, useful change in mentality for me. People always think of mistakes as these points of frustration where things go wrong. And it's so useful to be able to change that. As soon as you start thinking of mistakes as opportunities for your progression, not only will it make you enjoy painting more, but I would actually say it's worth actively seeking mistakes out. And I know that might seem crazy because everyone wants these amazing results that we see online all of the time, but hear me out. Every time you make a mistake, if you choose, you can learn something from it, right? And if you make a mistake, instead of getting frustrated, ask yourself why you made the mistake and how to avoid it next time. Now that's gonna be something trivial like dropping your paintbrush on the model. That can't be helped, don't have butter fingers. But there are gonna be much more opportunities from that as well. But what's really important from making mistakes is if you make a mistake, 
you now have an opportunity to learn to fix it. And the reality is, is if you make a mistake when fixing, say a transition or a blend or an edge highlight, and you learn to fix it, it's going to make you far more confident blending in general, doing edge highlights in general. It's going to make you more confident in general in that area. So when you make these mistakes, instead of getting frustrated with it, just ask yourself why you did it, how to fix it. And then if you learn to fix it, it's going to have a drastic impact on your painting. Mistakes are so, so important. And when I talk about mistakes making you happier, that might seem like such a daft comment. But what you need to remember is, as a general rule, we're going to be making more mistakes than we're going to have successes, right? And the other thing is, we notice things that frustrate us. And when things go right, it's just going right. That's acceptable. So as soon as you start thinking about these mistakes and looking at them as landmarks in your painting and trying to enjoy them as, as opportunities for learning, all of a sudden you have these trigger moments of success in your painting and it will make you enjoy it more. And when I was talking about seeking out mistakes, this might seem like a really weird comment, but let's say for example, you're trying to push your value range on a miniature, right? To make it pop more. Let's say, for example, you've gone as bright as you think is right and you've gone as dark as you think is right. How do you know if you can go brighter, but you're choosing not to because you think it might mess it up? Well, the reality is if you leave it the way that is, you're never going to know. But if you now push it brighter, you're unsure. But if you just choose to push it brighter and you make a mistake, well, you know for next time, you know, next time you don't need to push that bright. You've got it right. But if you don't push it, you don't go and try and make that mistake. You're never going to know. So this is really, really important. So seeking out those mistakes is also important because those are once again going to be, be those elements of learning that can change things quite a lot. Always take the risk. The benefits are huge. Next up, understanding what makes a good model and understanding what makes a great model. Now, that is actually very simple believe it or not. But the problem is, is no one told me, no one told me this is what you must do to make a good model, to make a model look good. And no one explained to me, these are the steps or the direction you need to progress to make great models. I just never knew. So just having this basic knowledge had a huge, huge impact on me. So what makes a good model? The fact is, all that makes a good model is a high readability value. And what I mean by that is, does your model look good from arm's length? If you hold it at arm's length, does it look clear and readable? Does every section of the model clearly separate from every other section? That's it. And if you look at Games Workshop paint jobs as an example, the more basic Games Workshop paint jobs, especially the old 90s ones, what you need to remember is they are the perfect example of well painted models. They might not be exciting, but we're looking at a good model. Remember something as simple as a neat paint job with clear edge highlights will clearly define every shape and make a good looking model. But the question becomes what makes a great model? A great model fundamentally is a model that is compositionally strong. And that is far harder to explain. And that's where all the buzzwords online come from when we're talking about color theory, uh, composition, contrast, focal points. And frankly, I would need a lot of videos to explain all of that, which funnily enough, I have. If you have a look in the members section, there is an entire fundamental series based around how you progress from the very beginning to the very end. So shameless plug, feel free to check that out in the description below. What I would say though, is your models need to be good before you can make them great. And what I mean by that is a high contrast model, for example, which is what everyone chases because that's what we're told. We're always told more contrast. A high contrast model will always look messy if it doesn't have high readability. So, what I'm talking about here is your models have to have that nice, readable, neat paint job before they have high contrast, before they become compositionally strong. Otherwise, they just look messy. So get the basics down first. Make good models before you start progressing 
into trying to make great models. Because believe me, the better you get, the harder this becomes. I say this a lot of the moment to so many people. The better you get in miniature painting, the harder it becomes to get better. Surround yourself with the right people. I know it sounds cheesy, but this is so, so important. Surrounding yourself with the right people is gonna have a massive influence on your own progression. And it's not just about surrounding yourself with people who are better than you. That is incredibly useful, but it's about surrounding yourself with people who are gonna lift you up and celebrate, genuinely celebrate your successes. And that, in my opinion, is quite hard to find. Now, not everyone has a painting community around them. Not everyone has a good, healthy painting community around them either. There are plenty of online communities that you can join, plenty of great ones. But you have to find the right one for you. If you're a little bit more sensitive to feedback, you're not gonna want one that promotes blunt feedback, for example. If you want one that focuses more around gaming, you're clearly not gonna want one full of golden demon painters. So you need to find the right one for you, join a few and get involved and see if it works for you. Once you find the right one, it will have a massive, massive, massive impact. I obviously have my own Discord, which I'm involved in, which is great. I also have two groups of friends I have private chats, private conversations with, and those help me massively as well. And I'm really lucky to be in that situation, but I haven't been always. So my suggestion would be here is make the effort, reach out, try and find those communities, try and find those other people who are, who have the same goals as you, who want you to succeed, and you need to genuinely want them to succeed as well. Find them, it will have a massive impact. It's nothing but a good thing. Teaching is one of the best things I ever chose to do, and I've been teaching for about 15 years now, but for the last six years, teaching people to paint miniatures. And it's, it's amazing fun. But what I will say is it's made a huge, huge impact on the quality of my own work. And although I don't expect people to go out and start teaching other people, what I did find is what it's really about is, is the need to articulate out loud what you're actually doing so when you're talking to another person it forces you to obviously have to explain to someone out loud a key concept but by doing that it gives you a better understanding of it and i know that might seem crazy to some people but it really does have a massive impact so my advice here is not to go out and run a class or anything like that obviously do it if you want have fun good luck but my advice here is to start talking to yourself when you're painting. Explain to yourself what you're doing when you're painting. Maybe write a blog, keep a diary, write some tutorials or something, whatever works. But I will say probably over the last six years, the biggest contributing factor to my progression from where I was to where I am now is actually coming down to teaching students. And it's huge. So give it a try. Consistent painting. Painting consistently for me is a far stronger option than painting not very often, but for longer chunks of time. I used to try and paint for three or four hours at a time. And if I didn't, it would frustrate me because I felt like if I didn't paint for long enough, I wouldn't get the improvement that I needed. What I found these days, especially as I get to paint less because I have less time to paint now because of everything else that I'm doing, is if I paint for half an hour every day or half an hour every other day, it gives me enough work to maintain my muscle memory. I'm not regressing at all. But what I also find is because I'm not painting for so long, I actually work harder when I do paint. So I'm more engaged. Whereas in where I, if I'm painting for three or four hours, I switch off for certain periods of time. I do other things, my mind wanders. When I'm painting, when I've only got half an hour, 45 minutes to paint, all of a sudden that time is more precious to me. I actually work harder and I achieve so much more and I get far more out of it. Practice makes perfect, right? Wrong. I strongly disagree with this concept that if you just keep practicing, if you keep doing it, if you just keep painting, you're going to become better. That alone is not enough. It's possible for you to sit and paint for three or four hour sessions and just not really get anything out of it because you're not engaged. So this is where we talk about active painting, consciously painting. The idea that you're painting with purpose and you're painting and you're trying to truly engage and understand what you're doing. 
because most of the time what happens is is when you're painting for longer sessions or when you're just painting in general you're not really paying attention you're going through the motions you're just doing another base coat you're just doing another highlight you're just doing another edge highlight you're not actively engaged in it and you're getting very little out of it at most you'll get gradual increases in your brush control that's great but if you want to be a better painter that's not enough we have this idea of unconsciously painting will gain us very little but if we consciously paint we'll have huge amounts of improvement because we're really engaging with what we're doing so when you're painting next ask yourself truthfully are you really thinking about what you're doing why am I using my brush this way? Why is my paint consistency what it is? Am I holding my model in the right position? There's tons of things that we can be questioning ourselves about to really make us think about what we're doing. And it's going to have a massive impact. So ask yourself if you truly want to improve, are you making yourself improve? So my last point here, and I left these to last because I didn't want to overload the video with buying things. There are two books. That's three. <laughs> but there are two books, apparently. There are two books that really helped me when I was trying to move from being a good painter to a great painter. And that comment might sound arrogant, but is what it is. I'm going to upset some people on the internet no matter what. But these two books are Figopedia by this guy. This guy. I'm going to butcher that name, so I'm not going to even try. But this book is amazing. I absolutely loved it. The other book is Colour and Light by James Gurney, which I don't have here, but you should be able to see it on screen. Maybe here, if I've got it right. <laughs> but a friend of mine's got it at the moment, so I don't have it here. But it's uh, both these books are absolutely incredible. And if you're looking to progress into display painting, they give a really, really great insight into light and colour. Um, and volume interpretation which is massive to start moving your miniatures into looking like really really striking and based more in realism so I can't recommend these two books enough they had a massive massive impact on me but like I said both of these books go in depth into color and light which are massively contributing factors to creating beautiful miniatures so if you're looking to increase your understanding on these subjects without going to classes or without taking tuition or if you're just on a bit of a budget I can't recommend these two books enough they're incredible so thanks very much for watching everyone really really means a huge amount to me your time is really important to me if you did enjoy the video please hit the like button if you want to see more hit the subscribe button it means a massive massive amount to me I can't stress that enough let me know what you think of the video in the comments is there anything I should have added do you agree do you disagree there's nothing wrong with disagreeing on things it, it promotes generally educated conversations so I'm, I'm really interested to hear what you think and as always if you want to support the channel feel free to check out the members area in the description below there's a patreon there's a discord there's a members area for youtube whatever works man but if you can't do any of that and you've just watched the video enjoyed it and hit that like button as i said your time means so much to me thank you and i'll see you again soon